We start with the Bryant Avenue line in South Minneapolis crossing Minnehaha Creek on its own bridge. In order to reduce the width of the bridge, the two tracks overlapped. This is what they call gauntlet track. And they return to separate double tracks after leaving the bridge. The South St. Paul line used the Robert Street Bridge across the river. Next, we'll follow the Minnehaha line from downtown Minneapolis out to Fort St. This next sequence follows a Minnesota Rail Fans Association fan trip over the Broadway Crosstown line in north and northeast Minneapolis with a side trip to Northside Station. This was also the... and a side trip into the yard at Northside Station. During the last years of streetcar service in St. Paul, the Hamlin-Cherokee line was the only one that crossed the Wabasha Bridge to the west side of St. Paul. Here it is on Wabasha at 4th Street. Here's that same excursion entering the stub track that terminated in Minnehaha Park opposite the Soldier's Home Bridge. The stub was a remnant of the original line to Fort Snelling, which was later bypassed. Here you see a streetcar passing the Minnehaha Depot. Note the original center overhead wire poles, replaced everywhere else by poles on the side of the road. Leaving Minneapolis, the line entered the reservation of Fort Snelling. At Fort Snelling, it met the streetcar line from downtown St. Paul, as well as a streetcar shuttle to the upper post. This is Henry Street in North St. Paul, and this was the meeting point for cars in the later years. The Matamidi line was single-tracked, and there was a passing siding here. A South St. Paul car approaches the end of the line at the Invergrove city limits. The motorman on the excursion was Ed Nelson, a huge streetcar fan and one of the original historians of Twin City Rapid Transit, and here we see him running the car up Nicollet Avenue. When the streetcars quit here in 1954, Ed was brokenhearted. He moved to Toronto, Canada, and worked for the rest of his career for the Toronto Transit Commission, which never got rid of its streetcars. This excursion covered a number of lines. In this case, we're headed out Glenwood Avenue. You can see downtown in the distance.
We're just south of Matamidai, and behind the camera was where the old Wildwood Amusement Park was until 1938. This is the end of the line in Matamidai, with a rail fan trip coming out of the Y and the regular service car backing in. On the car, headed from North St. Paul up to Matamidai. This was really a country trolley. And until 1932, the cars went all the way to White Bear Lake and to Stillwater. This is just south of Wildwood and Willerney. This area is now a bike trail. And the Hosmer Library at 36th Street, which still stands. This trip was taken one day after the line was converted to bus, which is why you see the bus in this frame. This is the Y at 38th Street for short line cars. At the south edge of downtown, the line used Grant Street for one block to shift over to Nicollet Avenue. This is another Minnesota Rail Fans Association excursion. It's turning around the loop at 62nd and Nicollet. The Glenwood Avenue line ended at Glenwood Park, which is now called Theodore Wirth Park. Here's the streetcar approaching the end of the line and then backing into the Y track. The Glenwood Avenue line was paired with 4th Avenue South in downtown Minneapolis, and here the car is on 4th Avenue, turning next to the Minneapolis Auditorium to head south. This building survived as Superior Plating Company for many years, and was finally torn down after 2005. It was the last of the car houses in service. This is a rail fan trip pulling out of East Side Station. They like to use the gate cars that ran on the inner campus line. They were the last gate cars in operation on the system. 